They will know that we are Christians by our love. John 13, 34 through 35 reads, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And so, Father, I would like to thank you for the unity. I'd like to thank you, Father, for unity. I'd like to thank you for you displaying your unity for wherever the Father is, white oak, the world, that is where the Lord is. I will say that again. Wherever the Lord is, you will see love. And though we live in a world that constantly divides us, I thank you, Father, that you unite us. Your cross unites us. You cross barriers. You heal wounds. You restore love. And as you do it, we all know that it is nobody but you. 
Father, so we thank you for the unity with all believers in this world because when we see unity, when we see love, when we see sacrifice, when we see healing, when we see deliverance, then we are able to see the power of you and it will testify that you are real, that you are authentic. Hallelujah. So Father, we pray that you will continue to help us die in our flesh, Father, that our, our wounds from the past of yesterday won't hinder us from uniting and showing the cross, the blood of Jesus. Thank you for White Oak, Lord. Thank you for their unity. Thank you for their love, their open arms toward strangers. Father, your word talks about us loving the strangers. Let us not be so caught up to bring them into a building, but let us be so caught up to bring them to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for a global impact that you have had with White Oak through the ministry of LEAP and through the different ministries that are a part of this church. Lord, in this time, we don't need division. We don't need division of denominations and division of nothing, but we need unity. We need you. We need the witness of your power. Psalm 133 reads, Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessings of life forevermore. Now, Father, I thank you for the legacy. Thank you for the legacy of this house and the impact of the community. Thank you for the wealth of wisdom that is stored up within these people that are sitting right here on the pews. Thank you, Father, for the preservation of that wisdom, that it can go from generations to come. Thank you, Father, for the books, the letters, the notes, the recording devices that we have nowadays to be able to tell our youth, our teenagers, our grandchildren, our daughters, our sons, hit record on your phone and let me tell you about the awesomeness of the Lord. Let me tell you about the testimonies and the things that he has done in my life. Let this be a recording that you pass down to generations to come. Father, I thank you for the testimonies of these, your beloved, that are sitting here today and all over in the, in the world, Lord. Help us to preserve your word, Lord, like you have the Bible preserved. Help our testimonies be preserved. In the name of Jesus, let that be written. Hallelujah. I know you say you love God, but why do you love God? Hallelujah. <laughs> Father, I thank you for now healing in this place. Thank you, Lord, that you are the great I am. Thank you, Lord, that you are divine healing. Thank you for your esteem in this place. Father, you know the different needs of each and every one of your children in this place and those who are listening under the sound of my voice. Father, you say you know the things I know you have need of before you even ask them. So, Lord, I thank you for your divine and all-powerful hand doing what only you can do. Perform. Give yet another testimony, Father. Deliver us. Set us free, Father. Comfort us where comfort is needing. Strengthen us where strength is needing. Empower us where empowerment is needing. Heal us, Father, where healing is needed. I believe in you. You are healing. And this is why I'm praying it. You are healing. That is who you are. You are a deliverer. So, Father, I thank you now for us being able to receive that. You are signs, miracles, and wonders. It's not just what you do, but it is who you are. And because I know that you care and you respond, I pray because I know that you are Emmanuel, God with us. I pray 19, Matthew 19, 26, which reads, But with men this is impossible. 
but with God all things are possible. Father, I thank you now for doing the supernatural because that is who you are. That's not just what you do, it is who you are. It is who you are. It is who you are. And you delight in demonstrating your power. You delight in demonstrating your glory. You delight in doing the things that man tell us, sorry, sorry, there, I can't do. There's no hope for this. There's no hope for that. But we thank you, Lord, that you do because that is who you are. Thank you for the new testimonies that you have for us to have. Just take a moment and tell the Lord that you receive him doing what only he can do. We're going to take a moment in here in Christ alone. And we're going to reflect on that for just a second because it is in him and him alone that can do the things that we each personally need to be done. And I thank the Lord that he is personal. That is what separates him from all else and keeps him in a category all by himself. He is personable. He cares. He knows. He sees. And he responds. He responds. When I address the Almighty, I address him as a responder. Just take a moment and just reflect on the Father being responder today as we listen to this hymn. Amen. Bless the Lord, everyone. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Now we're going to do so. We're going to continue in worship with the worship of giving an offering. I would like for you to prepare your best gift and give today. Knowing that you're not giving to me, you're not giving to Pastor Danny, but you're giving to the Lord. I'm not going to, I'm a type of person to get straight to the point. Get straight to the point. Yes. God knows your heart. And give as you're led. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can you come in? So we take offering.
sorry for the offering. Father God, as we continue in our act of worship, I pray your blessings on every giver that has partaken in this time of worship. I ask that you take these gifts now, that you will multiply them, that you will use them for the furtherance of your kingdom's work. May we all receive an, an added blessing by participating in the giving today. Lord, you are the giver of all things. But as we have heard already this morning, you're the responder. And now you will respond out of our obedience of giving. We pray your blessings on the offering that's been received. And the church said, Amen. Amen. So I'm going to lead us in worship today, and I'm going to start with the song um, Reckless Love. Reckless Love. You guys are free to sing along. Um, it talks about how the Lord is so rich in his love and how he's delivered us. And um, truly, um, that seems to be the theme for today. spoke a word you were singing over me you've been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathed your life in me you have been so so kind to me Still your love fought for me You have been so, so good to me When I felt no worse You paid it all for me You have been so, so
shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me, no, no, no And no wall you won't kick down A lie you won't tear down Coming after me one more time And no shadow you won't kick up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me, yeah No wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down Coming after me No shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me, yeah Sing it loud with you. I want you. Bless the Lord. Amen. Thank the Lord God for a love like that. Amen. Because it's that love that saved my soul. Amen. Such that I can stand before you today Amen. to witness of the goodness and the greatness of the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. First of all, thank you, Pastor Danny, for entrusting me to come before your flock today to share the word of the Lord. I do not take it lightly, and I am humbled by it. Do know there is a word in the house. Um, as I pray, the Lord starts speaking to me as far as the word. And he spoke it to me in my quiet place. I'm not going to say what my quiet place is, but my, my girls know what my quiet place is. But as he gave it, I could not leave until it was done. That's how strong it was. Um, so let me get my glasses. I'm getting used to glasses, y'all. I'm getting used to it. A little, little hitch, a little break, you know, everything up. I stare, I stare at the computer almost nine to ten hours a day, and I've done that for the past, what, 
17 years for my uh, marketplace work. And because of that, it has messed up my eyes. Cause, see, here I wasn't looking away. So, quick advice. If you start a computer, look away at times. Close your eyes, look away, don't stare. For blink your eyes, keep them warning. What's where it is. So, let's get into the work. My assignment today is to do what Paul told Timothy to tell you exactly the same thing. And what that is can be found in 2 Timothy verses 1 through 6, which is to stir up the gift of God that is in you. Some translations say to fan the flames of God's gift in you. So I am simply here to let you all know that God desires for you all to fan the flames of fire of the gift that's already inside of you. Amen. Now, this gift is God given. And according to Romans eleven twenty nine, 29, it is an irrevocable gift, meaning it can't be taken away from you. I don't care what you've done what you are doing or what you will do, it will not be taken away. See, because it is irreversible. God can't do 180 degree with it. It's irretrievable. It can't be taken away. Unalterable. It cannot be altered. I don't care what it can't be altered. Unchangeable, immutable, permanent, binding, and final. Amen. That gift that's in you is final. I don't care. I don't. It's final. However, it said in uh, in um, in French. Is it French? I think it's finito. Is that French or is that Spanish? I can't remember. But it's finito. Final. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, now, if I may, if you, if I may, let me compare that gift to some wood. To wood. As you know, some trying to say fan the flames. Okay, if you know with wood, it catches fire and everything. Um, so I, let me let me back up for a minute. Let me back up. Okay. When you burn wood that's in a fireplace or in a fire pit or in my favorite place, a smoker. <laughs> my favorite a smoker. <laughs> at times when a fire you no, know, at times when the fire has been going on for a long period of times, you got to stoke the coals a little bit, okay? Why do you have to stoke the coals? Because sometimes as it goes on, ash builds up on it, right? And then because ash is on there, you can assume at times that the fire is out or because of ash on there, it can, it can prohibit the oxygen from getting to the embers that are deep down inside. So you can assume. So at times you gotta knock that ash off to reveal the embers to allow the oxygen to get to it. Sometimes in life, we gotta knock the ash off. We gotta knock that ash off. And what exactly, what is ash? See, if you notice, Ash is a byproduct of burning the wood. So it was something that was originally good, but now it has turned to something that is working against the fire. So sometimes, some things in our life, as we go through, uh, grow up in, in church and everything, there are some things that were good for us. I mean, good. But as we mature, it become a hindrance to us. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me make it plain. When a baby is born, the first thing that they need for nourishment is milk. That's what they need. Milk, milk. So that's all they drink. But as they grow and mature, they need something much more than just milk. Now, if I just give my son milk all day, just none but milk, he'll look at me crazy. Think I'm crazy and all. And plus, he will die of mere nourishment. Why? Because he does not have all the nutrients. So what was once feeding him as an infant would now become a hindrance to him as he gets older. See, sometimes when we, not sometimes, when we mature in the Lord, 
we have to be willing to to mature with him okay we have to be willing to to as as hold on I'm getting ahead of myself let me, let me we have to be willing to recognize what is the ash knock it off and fan that gift in us gotta gotta come on get off and fan it okay okay Okay. 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 Point. Okay, I'm here. Okay. Now, sometimes we have the ash on there. It looks like the fire is out. It looks like that I have no more use for that wood anymore. It looks like that. But someone with a trained eye that can look at that and say, no, I see a I see a hot spot. I see something hot in there. I still see an ember that can look past the ash. Yes. Okay. I still see something in there. I see it. So let me come in. <clears throat> to get it going. To get it going. Okay? See, hear me in the spirit. Some people will come in here. And look at all of you all and say, hmm, okay, all right. No, they can't do it. Because they're looking at what they see on the outside. I'm here seeing what's on the inside and say, yes, they can do it. Yes, it's in you. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how young you are. I don't care what you're going. You can do it. Why? Because I see hot spots in you. I wouldn't be here if I didn't see hot spots. I see hot spots in you. So let's just fan the flame. Stir up that gift. Stir up that courage. Stir it up in you. Why? 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 I'm going to tell you why. Why? did God send me here to remind you to stir up the gifts in you, to fan the flame? Because there's a work still that you must do. There's wisdom in you that must get out to the next generation. There's not just wisdom but how can I say this there are some people that can read the word but don't know how to apply the word you've been here on this work with the Lord for a while you know how to apply the word that's what's needed to be broken down in every last one of you hmm Mm. Mm. So, it is not time to throw in the towel and give up. No. It is time for you to dig in and advance the kingdom of the Lord. Yes. You can do it. 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 Ah, you gotta hear me. 
you gotta hear me. You can do it. If you couldn't, he would have called you home with him right now. That's right. But you're still here. Amen. So Amen. you can do it. Amen. His grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can do it. Is it going to be easy? No. No, it's not going to be easy. As a matter of fact, in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 through 14, Christ himself says, choose the narrow path and that it was going to be difficult. If you're going to do something for the Lord, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be difficult. But have you noticed that when he says or tells us to do something, in our, eye, in our eyes, it seems insurmountable, impossible. Like, Lord, you want me to do what? Don't you see I'm, Lord? Do, no, you know, you tripping, Lord. You don't know. You know, no, Lord. Yes, he knows. He knows. And here's the thing about it. Here's the thing about it. Is that when he tells us to do something or go somewhere, sometimes he doesn't give us all the details. He just says, go, dot, dot, dot. Or do, dot, dot, dot. But yet, he doesn't give that fine little print of how to do it at times. I believe he does this, leave out his little details, so that we would know where our faith and trust is in him. Amen. See, he already knows. We the ones don't know. Sometimes we can think we know. That's right. Amen, sometimes we can think we know. But when the rebels meets the road, be like, Lord, do you see this going on? Do you see this foolishness in front of me? Hold on, Lord. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Then he'll come back and say, I, I, I thought you, well, Lord, I, I thought so too. I thought so too. <laughs> but here's the good news. He's already know. Yes. And so he makes us aware of that so that we would know. That's right. Okay. And, and according to Hebrews chapter 12, verses 2, Jesus is the author, or in one translator, the initiator of our faith. Meaning, he is the maker of our faith, biographer of our faith, originator, originator of our faith. Inventor of our faith, creator, architect, and motivator of our faith. He's all of that. And also in uh, verse 2 of Hebrews chapter 12, he says that he is the, the finisher, or as one translation, the completer of our faith. Meaning he is the perfecter of our faith, the settler of our faith, the confirmer and the finalizer of our faith. That's right. That's right. As long as we are here on this earth, our faith is going to be tested and going to have to grow. As long as we're here on this earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we should look at every go or do as an opportunity for God to increase our awareness of our faith and to work out our faith. Yes. To work it out. Right. To <clears throat> exercise 
Get stronger. Yeah. Whenever we work, it's not easy. When I work out, I'm sweating, huffing, and puffing. I'm <laughs> when I'm working out. But I know it's doing, it's benefiting my body. That's right. And yes, I increase the weight on there. And it's painful for a moment, but it's beneficial to my body. If in the natural, working out our body is good, how much, how much more is it is in the spiritual to work out our faith? How much more would it be for our faith, our inward being? Yes. So I'm at a point now, whenever I have a difficulty that comes up, like, I don't try to freak out as much. I'll say, okay, God, what is it that you want to do right here? Right. What is it that, that, that you're trying to work out in me? See, another thing, too, is that when I work out physically, what it does, it helps my body to, to detox and process out all the, all the uh, gook and stuff that's in me. All the fat that's in me, all the all my organs, all that stuff. When I work out, it, it, it helps my body to, to detox itself. Sometimes we have to detox our spirit. How do we do that? By letting the Lord work our faith. Amen. 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 Hmm. Amen. See, God is moving me all over the place. I had no Sarah. He just moving me all over the place. <laughs> so how about I just just stay with His flow, stay in His flow. See, see. <laughs> laughing at me over there. <laughs> See, sometimes, no, if we could just let go and let him lead us, okay? Even if it, even if it, even, even if it, even if we have a, 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 a sense of fear or, 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 or a sense of fear because we don't know this is uncomfortable to us. This is not the normal way I'm used to. But can we allow, in other words, how can I say this? Can we take that box and just take it apart? Take the limits off the box. Take the limits off our mind. And so, okay, Lord, I don't know what you're doing. Um, I'm a little scared right here. But uh, uh, I'm going to trust you right here. Amen. Yes. I'm going to trust you right here. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. So... What does Father wants to do? He wants to grow your faith, you all. He wants to grow your faith. He wants you to live at another level of awareness of a whole dimension of faith, new dimension of faith, such that you can experience his glory. Right. His glory. Because, mm. excuse me, his, hmm. Well, the spirit of the Lord is, or his glory is, there is freedom, there is healing, there is courage, there is restoration, there is everything in his glory. So, if we allow him to work our faith, grow our faith, we'll be able to see him we will be able to be able to be old, have a whole new of awareness of his glory that he can operate through us out because his glory is not for us to hold on to or to or to this but it's for it's to come through to go out to go out to others to to come in work that gift empower that gift so it's like fire shut up in your bones to where you can't help but yeah. yes get it to come out 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, another thing in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 through 14, is that it's difficult. Yes, it's difficult because he wants to grow our faith and challenge our faith. But it's also difficult because at times we need to be humbled. We think we got it all together. You know, yeah, I've been doing this for umpteen years. I know how God flows. We're going to do it like this. I got this. We can get kind of, as the young folks, kind of cocky a little bit. Because we, because we've been in the way for a nice long amount of time, but we find in Proverbs chapter sixteen, verse eighteen, that pride goes before the destruction, and a haughty spirit or arrogance before the fall. Also, in First Peter five and five, says that he resists the proud. Or, or he oppresses the arrogant, but gives grace to the humble. So we obtain grace for the goal of the do by humbling ourselves. I would rather humble myself and have that grace than to try to go out there and do it Without it, Amen. it, 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 it kind of the Lord just dropped some spirit. You remember when the uh, seven sons of Sceva we went to the tomb and said, uh, "Come out!" In the, in the, what do you say? Come out in the in the in, in the Jesus whom Paul preaches. That thing said, "Jesus, I know. Paul, I'm aware of. But who are you? And what their tail?" <laughs> Uh, I believe it said that they whooped into the tail to where they were all naked. Now you know that's some that's some whooping. That's some, that's some whooping. I ain't had a whooping like that since I was yeah, how about my mom? <laughs> and them weren't good ones. You know, but I know that I never tried it again after that. So they were coming in some type of arrogance of they I got trying to do no, you can't do that. No, you gotta whew, humble. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. See, growing up, there was a saying that Jesus is my co-pilot. They even had bumper stickers. Jesus is my co-pilot. Jesus is my co-pilot. But see, that's the problem. That's the major problem. See, all what a co-pilot does is just sit there while a pilot do the things. And then if the pilot needs something, then the co-pilot come in. See, for so long, we be saying, Jesus is my co-pilot. We want to take the reins of the wheel. No, we need to reverse. Jesus is the pilot. I'm the co-pilot. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? He's the pilot. He knows everything. He knows every mountain high, every valley no, every storm. He knows how to navigate through all of that. So why in the world, if when I try to sit in the seat and I don't know nothing, I can only see but this far. Why? When the one, the one, who can see from the beginning and the end, who is the beginning and the end, who sees... Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Amen. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says that his thoughts are not our thoughts, nor our ways are his ways. For as heavens are higher than the earth, so are my so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts <laughs> higher than your thoughts. So we must humble ourselves and let our faith and trust be challenged. We have to. We have to. See, I love how Paul puts it. He puts it in Philippians uh, chapter 3, verses 2 through 14. In there, 
he goes down his whole resume. His whole resume. Mm -mm -mm. In verse five, he says, circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuted the church, concerning righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. Yes. All of that. Verse seven, he says, but what this were gained to me but what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Everything. I mean, he was, in, 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 in today's time, he would be uh, considered more like a, um, like an archbishop or even a pseudo, just this, that, all this, and a high up. But he said, he counted as loss for Christ. Everything. Right. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish. See, count that stuff as rubbish. Rubbish. That I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Hallelujah. Verse 12, not that I have already attained or am already perfect, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press to I press toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Goes back to we gotta let go. See, sometimes, have you, sometimes when, when you're going, see, I believe one another reason why he made it difficult is so we can let certain things go. Mm -hmm. I remember I was watching some show on uh, National Geographic where they're exploring these caves. And so the, the gentleman had his backpack on, he was going this, that, but then it started getting narrower and narrower and narrower. Then it got to the point to where he had a choice. If he wanted to go further, he had to take off his backpack. He had to let it go if he wanted to go further. So because he wanted to go further, he took off what was good for him at one point, but now had become a hindrance for him to go forward. So he took it off and he wedged himself through there, straining, going through there. And we got to the other side. Oh my God, he was able to see this huge cave with all those uh, stagnites and this, it was just beautiful. But what if he had not taken off that pack? He would have missed all of that, all of that. Something that was good for him back then, but wasn't for the now. Wow. Mm. See, we must not be like the children of Israel and doubt God. What I mean by that? 
the first generation, the, the ones that were free, they went on through the desert and they finally got to the promised land. They there. They sent in spies. All the spies. They looked. They saw the big grapes they had to carry two by two on poles. All the bonus of fruit, the land, everything. It was everything that God had said. They came out and gave the report. It was his everything. But yet, they doubted. No. They fear. Because of the unknown beyond that border. So what happened? God turned them around and allowed that generation to wander the desert for 40 more years and die out till he raised up a new generation. So what happened? That generation had to do the work what the previous generation supposed to have done. The previous generation was the one supposed to go in and fight Jericho, to move on and go in through the mountains and this, that. They were the ones supposed to do that, not the one after them. So the generation after them had to do their work, had to do the previous generation work, plus their work on top of it. How dare I not do my part to put a strain on them, to have them do my work on top of their work. How dare I? That's the reason why I'm here today. You can do it. Amen. You can do it. Don't be like them. You can do it. Amen. You can do it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I don't know what the do is or the go is. I don't know. Matter of fact, I don't want to know. It is not my place to know. That's between you and the Lord. But today, all Father wants is just a simple yes from you. Yes, That's right. I'll go. Yes, I'll do. I don't understand it. I'm a, I'm a little timid right now, a little scared right now, but I, I'll go. I, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll. This morning, pastor requested just taking those little cards, just little cards, little cards. And as you just happen to walk by people, how you doing? Just... The only thing, they, the worst thing that could happen to you is them say, no thank you. That's the, oh, that's the worst thing. No thank you. But it's okay. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Just trust. Um, Libby, can you come up here for a moment, please? I just want you to just play softly for me. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 through 6 says trust in the Lord with all your heart Excuse me. lean not to your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path see the Lord during this time of my life I was at a I was at a point where I was unemployed. Let me back up. In September of 2001, I bought a house. I was a single man, I bought a house. I had my house. In April of 2002, I lost my job. It. So I'm like, here I am. I got this note now. No job. What am I going to do? The 
only thing he said to me was, trust me. That was the only words I heard during that time. Trust me. I was literally waking up not knowing where my next meal was going to come from. I said, but Lord, you trust me. Okay, Lord, I'm going to trust you, Lord, but right, it's kind of tight right now. Trust me. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this, Lord. Trust me. I'm going on these interviews. They saying, no, you got too much experience or so you don't have enough experience. Come a little. Trust me. Okay, I'm going to I'm I'm trust you. And in that time, he gave me a poem called Trust Me that I would like to read to you all that helped me through. God says these things, these words to me. I know the path I have you on sometimes seems unclear to the point to where you can't see. But all I ask is that you trust me because I already know you can't see. Yet trust and I will guide thee. Some things I can't show you because you're not ready to see it. Don't worry about what people say even if they call you a misfit. For they don't understand the path I have you on. It's the path purging you and making you seek my throne. My God. People can't handle the things I've told you to do. That's why I've assigned them to you. So don't worry if the path appears to be unclear. All you have to do is turn and know that I am near. So near, I can hear your heart. I will guide your footsteps and I will never depart. Yes. Yes. When the Lord gave me that, I posted it up on my wall because that was me. <sighs> 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 Getting stronger. He said, Trust. Okay. I got a bill, dude. Trust. Trust. I have no food. Trust. 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 People think I'm crazy. It's getting heavy, but trust. I'm still gonna trust. I'm trusting. I'm trusting. I'm trusting. Pretty soon. Pretty soon. So. I would like to close with this. I was in my keep on keep on playing. I was in my uh, again in my quiet place, and the Lord gave me a parable. I didn't know it was a parable until I said, "Well, Lord, this this is actually a parable." It's okay. So I'll just share that with you all. A certain person transitioned to heaven. An angel met them. Said, welcome, come on in. Come on in. Come on. Say, come on in. They walk in, looking around, seeing the streets with gold, seeing the mansions, and seeing everything. Like, wow. Wow. But far off in the distance, saw this building he said no nah, the person said to the angel what's in that building so oh, don't worry about it you don't need to know no, what's in it don't worry about it but that piqued the curiosity of the individual he said now nah, I want to go I want to go I want to go take notice the angel said okay I'll take you over there so they went into this building open the doors 
then walked in in his room. And on the wall, on the right side, was pictures of that person with various uh, milestones in their life of what God did. Over here, there's pictures. And over here, on the right side, there were pictures as well with them in there. However, the person looked at it and said, I don't remember doing that. I don't remember doing that. I don't remember doing that. What's the meaning of this? What you guys saw on this? The angel just dropped his head and said, this wall to your left is all the things that you did. This wall to your right, all that you could have done. But you see, you didn't start to gift up in you. You didn't start up in you. Because if you start up the gift, it would have given you the courage and strength to do all of this. I mean, this thing, him, all the person all around the world doing things, ministering things, just ah. But because, then start that gift up. Then accomplish those things. So, as I leave, there's a work for you to do. You can do it. You can do it. His grace is sufficient. Stir up the gift that's in you. Stir it up. Because it would give you the strength to do what he's told you to do. Stir it up. Stir it up. And be willing to let go. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to go out into the deep waters. Well, it wasn't it. Um, I forget what prophet it was, who it was, but they walked into the water. It was to their ankles. Then it was to their knees. Then it came. It was up here. Then it just. Cause don't be afraid to walk out there in the deep to where the waves consume you. Because you have to remember, in the word, the water represents his spirit. So when you're consumed by the water, you're being consumed by his spirit. Amen. So, Liberty is going to play this song. Well, play and sing this song. And the name of this song is... I am a child of God. She's going to sing this. And then afterwards, Pastor can come back up and do what you want. Thank you, Pastor, for this opportunity to speak to your flock. As I said, I do not take it lightly. I know I was here for a purpose. And I pray that this word minister to your spirit and it activated and stirred the gifts in you. Stir that gift. Stir it in you. You can do it. You can do it. If God said you can do it, then by God you can do it. Because he knows all things in all things. Knows the beginning, the middle, and the end. So if he said you can do it, just do it. I think Nike had a uh, had a spoke of revelation on the slogan, just do it. 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 Amen. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with the 
song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again. To your family, your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave. A child of God.